This is Module 2 of the Excel Training No Sweat Blueprint Reading Program, Special Part Features and Configurations. It will help you recognize several common features as they appear on parts and on drawings. You'll be able to use the information to produce and measure part features. Module 2 is divided into four lessons. Lesson 1 covers special part features and configurations. Lesson 2 covers additional special part features. Lesson 3 focuses on holes. Lesson 4 covers threads. This is Lesson 1, Special Part Features and Configurations, Part 1. When you've completed this lesson, you'll be able to identify the following features and describe how they're shown on blueprints. Undercuts and grooves. Rounds and fillets. Chamfers. Tapers. Beveled surfaces. Knurls. In addition, you'll be able to explain the difference between rounds and chamfers. And explain the difference between chamfers, tapers, and beveled surfaces. At first, this might sound like a lot, but you'll quickly learn to recognize the different features. You're probably already familiar with many of them. In just a short time, you'll be able to identify them on blueprints. First, let's start with undercuts. An undercut, also called a groove, is a recess cut in the diameter of a part. It looks like a neck between the body of a part and its head. Undercuts make it easier to machine and cut threads. Sometimes, an undercut is needed to create a clearance for threads in a part. Undercuts are shown by a note on the drawing that specifies the width and depth of the cut. A round or radius is a rounded corner that curves outward. Rounds improve the appearance of part corners and eliminate sharp edges that could interfere or chip off under a sharp blow. A fillet, on the other hand, is a rounded corner of a part that curves inward. It increases the structural strength of the part by allowing additional metal in the intersection of two surfaces. As you can see, this fillet forms a rounded corner. On blueprints, a round or fillet is defined by the radius of the circle that forms it. It is as if you were to fill in the rest of the imaginary circle created by the round or fillet and measure its radius. The round or fillet radius is indicated by a dimension line with an arrow pointing to the corner to be rounded. The dimension of the radius is shown followed by an uppercase R. If all of the rounds and fillets on a drawing have the same dimension, you may see one note for them all. It will not be connected to any one feature of the drawing. Chamfers are another special part feature. Chamfering is the cutting away of the corner of an edge on a part. Edges are chamfered for the same reason they're rounded, to eliminate sharp corners. The difference between the two, however, is that the rounded edge is smoothly rounded, while the chamfered edge is flat. Here, the measurements for the chamfered edge are shown on the drawing the same way you would normally see any other surface and angle specified. The length of the chamfered surface and the angle of the cut. Often the amount of chamfer and undercut on a thread diameter is not supplied on a working drawing. Instead, the drawing will include a note like this. The size of the chamfer and undercut is based on the thread diameter and number of threads per inch. We'll look at threads more closely in Lesson 4, Threads. Another special feature found on parts is a bevel. A bevel is an angled cut made across the entire length or width of a part. Bevels are designed into parts for a number of reasons. In the die casting and plastic industries, Slight bevels may be designed into parts to help them release from the mold or die. Whatever the reason for the bevel, the cut is dimensioned by its angle in relation to a horizontal or vertical surface of the part or to the axis of the part. When a part changes size uniformly along its length, it's said to have taper. A baseball bat, an ice cream cone, and a pool cue all have taper. Taper is usually expressed in inches per foot which indicates the change in width, thickness, or diameter in inches per foot of length. For example, a taper of three quarters of an inch per foot is expressed as you see it here. Or it may be expressed in inches per inch. Let's take a look at the difference between a bevel and a chamfer. A bevel is an angle cut across the entire length or width of the part. A chamfer is an angle cut from a corner or edge. You should also be aware of the difference between a bevel and a taper. 
While a bevel is one surface cut at an angle to another horizontal or vertical surface on the part, a tapered part changes size uniformly along its length. Another feature you may run into is knurling. Knurling is a series of small ridges on the edge or surface of a part to make gripping easier. The inside sleeve where you grip a barbell often has knurled sections. So do micrometers. Knurling provides better holding properties. For that reason, it's often used on metal parts that will be bonded to plastic through injection molding. On a drawing, knurling is shown by a series of cross or straight lines on the surfaces to be knurled. The type of lines used will indicate the knurling pattern. The dimensions for knurled surfaces include two features. The pitch of the knurl, which is the distance between the knurled ridges, and the length of the knurled area. Let's pause now and review what we've covered in lesson one. In this lesson, you've learned to recognize part features, including undercuts, rounds, fillets, chamfers, tapers, bevels, and knurls. You've seen how to identify each of these on parts and on blueprints. You've also seen the difference between rounds and chamfers, and the difference between chamfers, tapers, and bevels. This completes the videotape portion of Module 2, Lesson 1, Special Part Features and Configurations, Part 1. Stop the tape now and complete the exercises in your No Sweat Blueprint Reading Participant's Guide before viewing Lesson 2.